Julia. Yes? When I was crossing the woods, something very strange happened. What was it? I, I heard a voice a calling to me. A voice? Yes, and, and it was my mother's voice. What? I heard my mother's voice calling my name. I heard it calling me over and over again. That's not possible. It was her voice. I heard my mother's voice, Julia, calling me. Carolyn, your mother is dead. The only voice you heard was in your own mind. Maybe. Where are you going? Out to my mother's mausoleum. Carolyn, that's nonsense. You can go there in the morning. You shouldn't go through the woods alone at night. I'll be all right. Well, then, at least let me get Barnabas. He's in the study. He can go with you. There's no need for that, Julia. I'll be right back.
Yes. Oh, thank God you're here. You heard the bells. It can only mean one thing. My mother is alive. Barnabas, we must open her coffin. Yes, we must follow out her instructions. I think I... I'd better do it alone, Julia. Take Carolyn back to Carolyn. No. I want to be here. But perhaps you shouldn't be. Open the coffin, Barnum. Take you back to college, Carolyn. My mother's mausoleum. Why did it go off? I don't know. It was probably some freak accident. Accident? Yes, or perhaps it was the, it was the scuffling. I keep thinking about what my mother said. That if the bell should go off, it would be a signal that she would still be alive. But you saw her, Carolyn, and she was dead. Yes, I know. That be at this time of night. Busy. Yeah, something's wrong with the phone. What is it, Carolyn? Donna is dead. Chris, what happened? That's the police. I had to come and warn you. Mr. Jennings? Yeah. I'm Sheriff Patterson. Yeah, what is it? I'd like to ask you some questions. Well, uh... Now! Yeah, come on. Well, Miss Stoddard. I just stopped by to tell Chris. There's nothing illegal about that, is there, Sheriff? No, there isn't, Miss Stoddard. You planning to stay for the questioning? No, Carolyn, you're going up to Collinwood now. All right, Chris. I purposely didn't turn on the lights. Good evening, Chris. Mr. Collins. I don't know why you did what you did. I don't imagine you do. But I'm grateful for it. I want you to know I appreciate that, but uh, listen, I'd like to be alone right now. I mean, I can't, I can't stop to talk about anything. No, we don't have much time to talk, do we? No. Uh, we'll talk tomorrow. Barnabas, you've got to get out of here. When I leave, Chris, you will leave with me. Look, you did me a favor. I appreciate it, okay? A big favor. I don't know why. Because I know you, Chris, are innocent. Well, thanks. That's fine. But still, I've got to be alone. You don't understand. Yes, I do. I do understand, Chris. 
the most important thing about you. that you are innocent. I'm innocent. Barnabas, now tell me what do you mean? I know that you're not only Chris Jennings. I know that you are the werewolf. You have no memory of what happens to you after the transformation takes place. That's the most agonizing part of the whole thing, is not knowing what I did the night before. How did you know that? Well, it's obvious you've forgotten that you attacked me in this graveyard the night before last. Oh, I, I didn't know, but I suspected as much when you came to the cottage the next morning. I saw you were hurt. It's a wonder you're still alive. No, it's a wonder you're still alive. You see, when you attacked me, I fought you off with this. Silver is the one thing that I can kill you with in your other form. Is this the place? Yes. I thought you were going to bring me someplace I couldn't get out of. I did. You better kill me tonight. Why? This is not going to work. Believe me, once the transformation takes place, the door is not going to hold. No, it won't. But this door will. What place is this? It was originally intended as a secret storage room for ammunition during the Revolutionary War. How do you know about it? I am a Collins. I know a great deal about my family history. Obviously, it was used for another purpose after the Revolutionary War. Yes. Who's buried here? The coffin is empty. Well, then who was buried here? That's a bit of family history I know nothing about. You don't know, or you do, and you feel you can't tell me? Your question has nothing to do with why we're here. Mr. Collins, why are we here? to keep you from committing further violence tonight. That's not what I mean. I mean, why are you helping me? Because I want to help you. There must be more to it than that. After all, you're taking a great risk to help me. There must be some underlying reason why you're willing to do it. Because I know you're not responsible for what happens or what you do when a full moon rises and the transformation occurs. I see. And you think this room will solve the problem? For now, yes. Do you plan to bring me here every time there's a full moon? Until I find a better way of helping you? What other way could there be? Well, I... I hope that I'll be able to find a cure for your... Well, your condition. Forget it. You're wasting your time, Mr. Collins. There is no cure. When did the first transformation occur? About seven years ago. Tell me about it. There is no time now. The moon won't be rising for a while. There's still time. I just really would rather not talk about it, if you don't mind. Look, if I'm to help you, I have to know a great deal more about you. Now, you have to talk sometime. You might as well talk now. You are not safe here with me. You're forgetting that I have this. Now, tell me about that transformation. It was just a few days past my 21st birthday. I just graduated from college. I was going to be an architect. Oh, I was going to be an architect to be reckoned with. Bold, imaginative, revolutionary. I thought nothing could stand in my way. And something did. Something that I thought happened only in fiction. One night, just shortly after sunset, I began to feel a great pain all over my body. And as it began to increase, oh, man, I was terrified out of my mind. All of a sudden, it, it stopped. But then I got the most, the most shocking thing. 
that ever happened to me in my life. I looked down, and my hands, my hands had begun to grow hair all over them. And I looked in the mirror, and there was hair growing all over my face. Still, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't understand what was happening. Then I blacked out, just blacked right out. And the next morning, woke up and I was myself again. I thought, oh, well, it was, it was just a nightmare, you know? Until I looked around, I saw the evidence, evidence that I've seen, oh, must be a hundred times since then. Muddy tracks on the floor, my clothes all torn, the furniture just knocked all around the room. And always, always the news that someone had been attacked and often killed by a vicious animal. <laughs> and I knew, I knew the animal was me! Tomorrow morning will be better for you. How can you be sure that even this place is gonna hold me? Because the walls are made of solid granite. They are a foot thick, there are no windows. And the only way out is through that door, which I will close after I leave. There's, there must be some way to open this place from inside. I deliberately kept the door open while we talked so you wouldn't see how, the, how it operated from inside. All right, but does anybody else know where it is? There are a few, but they will not be here tonight, I guarantee that. Now, please. Oh. Be... Oh. Chris. Daddy! Oh, get out! Go on out! You've got to be your own sink! It's got to happen in a few minutes now. I wish there was some way that I could help you. No, just... Just close the door. Close it good. And pray. Pray that I can't get out of this place. I'll be back for you in the morning. Yeah. In the morning. <laughs> Chris, are you in here? Chris? Chris, can you hear me? What? What? Paul! Mr. Collins. It's all right. It's all right. Be calm. Just take a look around for a moment. Oh. Oh, yes, your, your secret mausoleum. How long have you been here? I just arrived. What happened last night? Did I kill somebody again? No, you killed no one. Our plan worked. You remained in this room all night. Thank God. Now come. We'll go back to the cottage and work out the next plan. Celebrate. Celebrate what? Oh, the emergence of the real Chris Jennings. Oh. What did this happen? Tonight, of course. Now, once this evening, have you looked troubled or depressed? How about that? And do you know why? Mm, I haven't the foggiest notion. Because you've been too busy enjoying yourself to worry about your deep, dark secret. What secret? Look, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to snap at you. I... I have a feeling I've just spoiled everything. No. 
No, you didn't look. I really did have a good time tonight. In fact, I've been more relaxed than I have been in a long time. Why? <laughs> you know the answer to that. Mm-hmm. But I want you to tell me anyway. Be like tonight. Yeah, so do I. Isn't it possible? It may be. Or it may not. Let's not think about that yet. How can I help you? Chris, you seem to have some sort of hang up, and maybe if I knew what it was, I, I could do something to help you. I don't think so. Chris, you don't... I don't want. Are you married? Is that what you've been thinking? Well, something keeps coming between us, and that possibility was bound to have crossed my mind. I can understand that it would. But you haven't answered the question. No, I'm not married. Never have been. How do you feel about it? About what? Marriage. Oh, Carol. I'm suppose... not proposing. I I just want to know your opinion, that's all. Why? Chris, you've told me so little about yourself. I would at least like to know where I stand in terms of the future. I, I mean, if there's no hope for us. I'd like to know it now. All right. I believe in marriage 100%, and I intend to be married as soon as I'm able. Does that answer your question? Yes. Am I going to see you tomorrow night? I'm counting on it. <laughs> 